Okay. Preferential discharge of ions. Preference. Some ions are preferentially selected for discharge during electrolysis. Well, let me start with the definition of a preferential discharge. Preferential discharge of ion, this is the selective discharge of a particular ion among ions that have similar charge or ion. Selective discharge of a particular ion among ions that have similar ions or similar electrical charge. Factors that affect preferential discharge of ions, we have position of the ion in the electrochemical series, ECS. And two, concentration of the ions in the electrolytes and the nature of the electrodes. These are three factors that basically affect the selection, the preferential selection of two similar ions during electrolysis. So when two similar ions are competing to which we be discharged at a particular electrode depends on this three factor. Basically the position of ions. Position of ions basically uh, prevail when two similar ions are competing. Which one should go to either the cathode or anode. This is where it prevails. The fact that the ions that is lower in this series is preferred to be discharged, not the one that is higher. So the lower the cation, the lower the cation, the lower the ion that is positively charged, the ease of discharge of the ions. This is what this particular point is talking about. So ions that are lower in the series are preferred to be discharged if there are two of them competing. So when you have two competing ions that have similar ions, the one that has that, that is lower in this series, I'm going to outline the electrochemical series once again to show you this arrangement of L elements in terms of their reactivity or electropositivity. So you that those ones that are highly reactive are not discharged. So the ones that are discharged are those ones that are least reactive in the series because the least reactive elements or metal will tend to, when it goes to the cathode, that particular least reactive metal will, is, will readily accept electron than the one that is more reactive in the series. So I would like us to take these factors one after the other and then solve it uh, with example. So what are these factors affecting preferential discharge of ions? I'm going to start with position of the ions in the electrochemical series. Position of ions in the electrochemical series. Okay, I'm going to give you the ECS. ECS of cations or metals. Okay, and so this is an um, electrochemical series for the cations. You can see them all positively the charge with their different um, charge values. And then you have this ones as the ECS of the anions. This is where you can see that they are all negative. Okay, the most reactive metal here, the most reactive cation here is potassium. Right? Most reactive. But reactivity to decrease is going down. This element in group one. They are more reactive. So going down this series reactivity decreases so the least reactive metal here is gold okay the least reactive here is hydroxyl the most reactive here is what fluorine so going down from here going from here down to gold here reactivity decreases But going from gold or here, reactivity increases. Going from F down here, reactivity, reactivity decreases. But going from here up here, reactivity increases. Okay, let's solve one example here. 
Supposing we are looking at the electrolysis of copper 2, tetrosis of excess, using a passive electrode or an inactive electrode. Okay. What's going to be the reaction? Copper 2, tetrosis of excess, what's going to be the reaction? First of all, we have to find out how this source dissociates. It dissociates into copper 2 and sulfate ion, hydrated bones. And then since in the electrolysis, uh, we should be talking about aqueous solution of the salts. Aqueous solution. So that means ions in the aqueous medium of this solution of these salts produces hydrogen ion and hydroxyl ion. Okay, so from this, I already know the position of copper. Look at copper here. Copper is second, while hydrogen here is, sorry, copper is second, yes, hydrogen is first for cation. Then for anion, for anion, um, we have these two. SO4 is second, OH is first. I mean, the first is one that we prefer to be discharged. Why am I preferring to discharge hydrogen ion and not, sorry, why would I prefer to discharge the second, not the first? Because the force is more reactive than the second. So copper is preferred to be discharged, not hydrogen. So here, this is actually going to be the second, and this is going to be the first. So which one goes is the least. So this is least, this one is least reactive. Least reactive, this is more reactive. So the least reactive metal is preferred to be discharged before the more reactive. So in that electrolysis, okay, we are finding the ions that are present. Four ions are present. Two similar ions will migrate to a particular electrode. So we have four ions present. Copper 2 is there. Hydrogen is there. This is there. And this 2 is there. So at that point, I would like to tabulate my reaction. Okay. I will have here what happens at cathode. What happens at cathode. And then what happens at anode. So at cathode, you have that copper 2 and H plus ion does it too, migrates, migrates to cathode. But at end, two of them cannot be the same time since the ions are similar. One is preferred to be discharged. Which one is preferred? The lower, the cathode. So this is the preferred. So when I say copper 2 is discharged, is discharged in preference to hydrogen ion. What will be my reason for actually copper not hydrogen? The lower the cation, the ease of discharge of the ion. So copper, lower in the series, is discharged before hydrogen. Please have to go back to the reactivity series of this element. So copper is less reactive than hydrogen. So that's why copper is discharged. And then if copper is discharged basically at cathode, copper is discharged at cathode, that is an aqueous medium, it goes to the cathode, which is a solid substance. The cathode can be made up of any type of metal or non metal. So, suppose it is going to a platinum cathode, it's going to get itself deposited. So, it's going to leave the solution. So, leaving the solution and coming to that electrode, copper is going to accept the electron. So, you have to check how many electrons he has lost. Before knowing how many electrons is going to accept. Since it has lost two electrons to form copper 2, that means it gains something that is equal to what is having as charge. It is two electrons. And once it gains that electron, copper is reduced. Remember, in our redox topic, we define reduction as the gain of electron. So at this point, copper, having plus two oxidation number here, having gained an electron, has basically reduced because this metallic copper here has a state of what? Zero. So this is the chemical equation of what happens 
at cathode. And then we come to the anode, we have sulfate, SO4, 2 minus, B negative, and OH minus, migrates. And when it's migrating, we have to select one, preferably to be discharged. So which one goes depends on what is list there. So list there is OH, so OH is preferred, not SO4, SO4 will remain. So we will say OH minus is discharged. Discharge in preference to O H sorry to S O four two minus. Okay, that's what happened there. And again, we also look at um, the reactions, the equation at the anode. What has happened at the anode? Okay, what happens at the anode is that first, since this O H is formed by gaining an electron. It's formed by gaining an electron. You have to make it to be neutral without electrons. So since it's gaining an electron, so you're going to maybe do as if it loses the electron. Okay? And you have OH. Okay? Okay. Or rather, we can say, we can say O H minus and then OH minus remember that this OH minus from water so we can still gain water from there so when this OH minus splits the combine to form H2O okay then so since 2 is here so we try to put 2 here and see if it's balanced okay H is balanced so we have a O well, here should be O2. That's what should be o combined. Oxygen does not exist, so we have O2. So basically, what should be here is 4. So to balance this, we have 2. So this is balanced. O is balanced by the fact that we have 2, 2 here. 4. O, 4. So what is not balanced here is the charge. So since we have 4 total net charge here, minus 4 here. So what we need to add here is plus 4E minus to balance the equation. So, when we do that, we will have to look at what we have at the anode and what we have at the cathode. So, what we have here should be added together to our. So, this is half cell anodic reaction. This is half cell cathodic reaction. So, if you want to have the reactions overall, we just say here 4 here, sorry, 2 here, 2, 2 here, 1. Okay, so I'm going to be multiplying the whole of this by that two there. And I'm going to multiply the whole of this by one. So if I multiply the whole of this by two, so this copper now becomes two mole of copper ion here. This is two times one here is two E minus. So what goes is up to two C U. Just like this. Okay, so if you multiply it by one, so we still have four OH minus here. 2H2O plus O2 plus 2E minus. So since we have similar electrons here, we we'll cancel here. It's cancelled. So the overall will be if I get the reactants of this of cathodic half cell with reactant of anodic half cell, I add them together. So my overall reaction now will be what? 2Cu2 two plus. Pick one here, this has cancelled, so I come here, I'll pick 4OH minus. So if I come to the reactant, I'll pick 2 copper, 2 copper, I'll pick 2H2O plus O2. This is the overall reaction for the electrolysis of this salt. So we have 2 copper ion plus 4 hydroxyl ion, it gives me 2 copper atom, it gives me 2 molecules of water and one molecule of oxygen gas liberated. So check it. If what I have here is balanced, I have two copper here, two moles of copper, I have two C is balanced. I have four oxygen here, I think I have two here, two here is balanced. I have four H here, I have two times two here, I think it's balanced. So the net charge here, no charge is here, is zero, zero, zero. So all together is zero. I have plus two times two, plus two, minus one times four, minus four, so minus four plus four. I think we have both side net charge to be zero. So this is basically 
what happened in the electronics of copper 2 tetra of the surfaces judging by the, the position of the ion so once ions are lower in the series these ions are discharged in preference to the ions that are basically higher in the series because that's, that's the other way around the lower the cation the ease of discharge so ions that are lower is discharged and not the one that is higher okay Practically looking at what has happened during this electrolysis of copper 2, tetra, or sulfate 6. Okay, I think I have to also put it in a cell. Let's try to see if we can look at cell explanation of this electrolysis of copper 2, tetra, or sulfate 6. Okay, suppose I have my electrolytic cell, my beaker, and that beaker has two electrodes dipped into it. It's the electrode. So the other electrode there will be two electrode dipped into it and then I now pour my electrolyte. My electrolyte this time is solution of copper 2 tetra oxysulfate 6. And then this is my plus, this is my minus, this is my anode, this is my cathode. Okay, and this is my electrolytes. Okay. And then I have these four solutions here. Okay, maybe if I have this four solution here, copper goes, copper and hydrogen goes to this side. Why SO4 and OH minus goes to this side? So because copper is lower, I'm going to bring copper up from the solution and maybe bring it up to stay here for a while. And then hydrogen remains in the electrical light. It can never it will migrate, but it will not be deposited. Okay, and then coming to the anode. I'm going to have OH minus up here, ready for discharge, and I'm going to keep SO4 so minus down here. So copper is going to go here, and if it goes there, remember I said earlier that this electrode is basically electron efficient. So copper here is going to, this copper one it goes there, is going to gain electron from the cathode, and once it gains electron from the cathode, it's going to get itself reduced. So Reduction now, reduction, reduction occurs, occurs at the cathode. That's what happened here, cathode. Okay, then something happened here. So the moment the copper goes in here, the mass of this cathode will increase because of copper being deposited. So I can also say that mass of cathode, electrode, increases. There's an increase in the mass since copper is discharged. Okay, coming to the these aspects, this particular hydroxy here migrates here. The moment it migrates there, the hydroxyl group will first of fall as, as a leak, give away electron, it must give away electron. It's going to give away electron and change into OH. Once it changed into OH, okay, so the OH now we break up into O minus H plus. So both combination of these two things is going to give you H2O. So H2O is going to liberate it. As it liberates at that point, OH2O is liberated, oxygen gas is produced. O2 gas is produced. So we're going to see that you start to see bubbles. Bubbles. Once the bubbles joins with that liquid, that H2O given up, this bubbles is now called AFA. AFA versus will occur at the anode because gas is produced at the cathode. But at sorry, at the anode, but at the cathode, copper is deposited at the cathode. So mass of the cathode is increasing, but mass of anode still remains the same. But if a vessence occurs at the anode, and then the electrolyte is no longer going to be the same again because once copper has left the solution, hydroxide has less also, uh, it's no longer in the solution. So now this H plus from water and this SO4 two minus from the copper salt we both combine, and then when they combine, it's a sulfuric acid form. You remember that the solution, copper solution is blue. But at the end of this reaction, you find that, that, that the blue 
blue solution blue solution of CuSO4 disappears there will going to be a disappearance or fade fades fades away there is no because copper is no longer in the solution again so it's not so solution can I say that solution becomes becomes colorless and at the same time acidic because what we have here now is what is hydrogen ion strong acid H2SO4 so in this case that pH of this solution after this electrolytic process is not less than 7 pH is less than we can have pH is now it's not going to be equal to 7 Okay, if it's equal to 7 that means it's neutral so it's going to say the, the solution is not acidic so pH is less than 7 so I'm going to have this pH less than 7 so that's okay so that's what we have here. That is, that is on the issue of preparation discharge in terms of a uh, position of the ions. I would like us to look at um, another factor affecting that is uh, concentration of the ions in the electrolyte. How does concentration of ions affect discharge of ions? I think, I think I have to quickly talk about that one in this video. Okay. Now, um, in the electrolysis of conch sodium chloride or electrolysis of molten sodium chloride or brine if I'm talking about the electrolysis, let's look at it electrolysis of conch sodium chloride ok, see the salt is concentrated that means I'm going to have more of the salt than solution so I'm going to have conch any CL. So I'm going to have any plus or CL minus. I'm going to have more water. Conch any CL. So little water H2O. So I'm going to have H plus plus O H minus. So the ions that are above here in above this H plus and O H like like CL minus is more concentrated than OH minus, so this is less, this is more. Na plus is more concentrated than H plus, this is also what? Less. So now, how does concentration affect selective discharge of ions? Okay, and the concentration more like affect the anode discharge, what products is found at the anode is good, but in the electrolysis, electrolysis, the anode is more like affect, be affected, not the cathode. Now let's look at the, elect the discharge quickly. So I have my table, I have what happened at cathode and what happened at anode. Okay, at cathode, Na plus and H plus migrates. But normally, based on concentration, um, sodium is more concentrated, so sodium ought to be discharged and not hydrogen. So we ought to discharge sodium in of hydrogen. But normally, in the normal sense, in terms of position of the ions, hydrogen is discharged. Okay, let's, uh, let me just give you a quick reminder of the electrolytics, uh, electrochemical cell again. K N A M G E L Z N F P P B Carotene P B H um, um, copper, H, and gold. Let me just give you a quick reminder of this. Okay, look at the electric. Let's sell again once again. So now, looking at where sodium is, and uh, looking at where H is. So, in terms of position, this is lower, this is higher. That is in terms of position. So, the lower the cation, so H is discharged in terms of position. But in terms of concentration, any plus is more concentrated than here. This is more, this is less. Okay. Now, condition here for H to be discharged 
or you need to be discharged is that for you to be discharged, one, it must be lower, and then two, it must have more concentration. But having a, it doesn't have concentration, concentration is not, it's very low, and it's lower in the service, but distance. Distance, distance, so do ought to be discharged and not added. But because of the position of sodium is very distant, very far from hydrogen, then we can now see that hydrogen ion is discharged in preference to Na+. Okay, I have my reasons for discharging hydrogen instead of sodium ion is because of distance. What they have basically the more the concentration of the ion, the more the concentration of an ion, the more discharge of the ion. So sodium is more concentrated, it ought to be discharged and not hydrogen. But because of where it is in the series, it's very far from hydrogen. So sodium is not discharged, but hydrogen. But if I come to the analog now, I'm gonna have some of their ions arranged. F SO4, 2 minus, NO3 minus, CR minus, BR minus, uh, I minus, OH minus. Look at chlorine and look at OH. Somehow, somehow, the two ions are not too far from each other. They are kind of proximity. But for the fact that chlorine is more concentrated than OH in this electrolysis, chlorine is discharged, basically. No competition. In fact, the discharge of chlorine is based on concentration and closeness. The two ions are close. So chlorine will now, concentration will now overtake position of the ions. So that is why in this electrolysis, even though OH is lower in the stress, but for the fact that Cl is more concentrated than OH, chlorine is discharged. But before I do say that, I could just admire that Cl minus and um, OH minus migrates, but two cannot be decided at the same time. So one is selected. Which one goes? Not OH, but this. So and as the Cl minus is discharged in preference to OH minus. What is my reason for discharging Cl? Concentration and proximity, closeness. They are too close. Okay, let me come back to this side. I have the ions. There's no way high can go with this, this net with current discharge. So, what do I do to get rid of this charge? So, now what I'm doing now is that simple. Simply say, this is going to the cathode to gain electrons. So how many is it going to give? Just one. It's going to get just going one to reduce to H. But uncombined hydrogen does not exist. So, let's say, therefore, H bond H give you H2. So, in all, for we to have this H2, it will be two of this H. We gain two electrons to form H2. This is my reaction at cathode. If I come to anode chlorine gas, is also a diatomic gas. So we're going to have Cl minus. What are we going to do here? It's going to form Cl2, basically. Because it cannot be Cl. It's diatomic. So what I'm going to change this to two. So that means for it to form Cl2, it's probably going to. Gain. It's probably go, it's probably going to lose electron. It's going to lose electron. So I'm going to add plus two e minus. So I can join the reaction now, having the two electrons equal. So this one can cancel this one. So my overall reaction will now be how the reactant here. This is my overall now. overall reaction now. Will be two h plus plus 2Cl minus, will give me what? 1 mole of H2 plus, plus Cl2. This is my overall reaction for the electrolysis of, electrolysis of concentrated sodium chloride. Okay, then uh, I can represent this in an electrolytic cell for better analysis and understanding. Okay, suppose I have my electrolytic cell 
I have my two electro dips into it. And then the electrolyte is conk any CL. Okay. Now, this is my cathode, this is my anode. So, at cathode, I'm going to have sodium down here, even though it's more concentrated because of where it position lies. So, it means that we're going to take this one to go. So, as soon as this one go here, it gains electron, it gains electron here, it gains electron, and then it goes like this. So, we have to have a bubble here. It means effervescence. There is nothing adding, there is nothing that's going to be added to the electric. So the electric state remains, cathode state remains the way it is. And then, coming over here, OH minus will remain down. CL minus is the one that goes. If it goes here, it's not going to have to give to the electric. So when you give to the electric, it's now becoming CL minus 2 BUC L2 plus 2 CL. So here we're going to have if the best thing because the gas here is also what? Chlorine. So, but at the end, the electrolytes is going to be what? The electrolytes becomes here, electrolytes, electrolytes becomes, becomes alkaline. Is alkaline. Because what we have here now is what? Is now sodium hydroxide. So, what happened to the pH? And I said that pH of the solution is greater is greater than seven pH is greater than what seven that is what I have in this electrolysis but the other way around what if I have this side I have maybe electrolysis of diluted sodium chloride Okay, let's see what we're gonna have in that case. Okay, I'm still gonna draw it. Let me draw it the way is it does not two different like that does not differ except the fact that we have different medium. So it's diluted. So in dilute of this, we have Na plus plus Cn minus H two O with H plus plus O H minus. So in this kind of discharge and this is not concentrated than this, so there is no concentration since it's dilute. So even H is more concentrated, this man is more concentrated. So in this case, these two I said code here will be discharged. It, it is electrolysis of diluted sodium chloride. This one is electrolysis, electrolysis of conk, conk, and CL. So this is what I have. So let's see what it's going to have if it's, it's electrolysis of diluted. So if it's diluted as cathode, at anode. So at cathode, H plus goes here, and A plus remains. At anode, O H minus goes, and C A minus remains. So these are the two things that go. So if this one go, here will be oxygen gas. If this one go, here will be what? Hydrogen gas. So the electrolytes, electrolytes, electrolyte remains. Remains the same as the concentration, concentration as the concentration, as the concentration of the solution increases. You know it's going to increase because uh, it was diluted before. So H plus from water. Oh, H from water. All have left this solution. So this solution become more concentrated, more sodium chloride. So the only thing you see there is sodium and chlorine. No water added to it again. So what is going to be the pH? pH, that's just like pH is greater than 7. But here, pH here is equal to 7 because this salt, solution of this salt is basically neutral. Since it is a salt of strong acid and then strong base. So its solution is basically neutral. So it's going to have pH. That is equal to seven, which will not have any effect on litmus paper. So these are the aspect of electrolysis, uh, discharge of ions in terms of concentration. So concentration will always override position of the ions depending on the distance between the two competing ions. If the if the ions that are competing are so far from each other 
I, no matter how concentrated the one that is too far is, the one that is lower we take precedence, we discharge, and not the one that is higher. Even if the one that is higher is more concentrated than the one that is lower. But we could, the reason why in, uh, at this point, chlorine is discharged in this case and not OE is because chlorine is concentrated, number one. The number two, the boats are close because if you check the aloe, uh, the cathode, for the sodium is never discharged, even though it's more concentrated than hydrogen. But for the fact that uh, they are distant, they are distant apart in their electrochemical cells. So one criteria that will determine whether concentration will be favored is one, not only concentration, but again, the two ions that are competing must be too close to each other in their electrochemical series. And then finally, we look at the third factor that affects this charge of ions, which is nature of an uh, electrode. I have said it in today's video that nature of electrode determines what and what is favored to be discharged. Electro can either be passive or active. Passive electrode that inact electrode. They are not in, they are not going to be taking part in the electrolytic process. They are just there as an electrode. But most electrolysis prefer electrodes that are passive than electrodes that are active. There are some some gases that when they are discharged at the cathode, if the cathode, if the electrodes are active, they are going to react with the electrode. I'll give an example chlorine. If you use an electrode that will not favor chlorine, suppose chlorine is one of the products that will be discharged at the anode. And if you use an electrode that will react with chlorine, chlorine will not be isolated and collected if it discharged. It will be very difficult to collect chlorine if such electrodes are used. So the common electrode to be used if you're electrolyzing a salt that will liberate chlorine at the anode. The anode must be graphite anode. The reason why it must be graphite because graphite being inert cannot, we never react with chlorine at any given condition. So chlorine can go there and still be isolated or collected from such electrode. So look at how these electrodes affect discharge of ions. We're going to be looking at electrolysis. Electrolysis of Copper 2 tetra oxofixes using inert electrode. Okay, I'm going to use inert electrode. I'm going to choose to use graphite electrode or platinum electrode. Just the two electrodes. Just whenever you're using either of these two, either graphite or carbon, or you're using platinum. You know, this is, they're not going to react, they're not going to participate in But basically, inert electrode. Okay, now in the electrolysis of copper 2 tetra oxysulfixis using inert electrode, I'm going to use graphite electrode in that electrolysis. Let's see what's going to happen there. So we we'll have um, our electrolytic cell. And then we have the two electrodes. This is inert electrode. So graphite, graphite, come on, come on. Okay, here is where electrolytes copper two tetrodes of AC. So these two electrodes are inert. Okay, so for the fact that they are inert, they will allow ions to discharge. So ions that will discharge here, beam minus plus anode cathode. Copper will go here. Remember, copper is lower. Hydrogen will remain down. Here, um, OH will go. Here, SO4 will remain down. Okay, at this point in time, at uh, this point, the electrolytes, electrolytes, electrolytes is acidic as the color, the color of solution changes from blue to colorless. That's what you see. Because copper two solutions are all blue in color. But if it is electrolysis, of copper 2 using reactive or active, active or reactive 
electrode. Okay, let me use copper this time. Copper electrode has here, it has a copper salt. If I should do that, remember here, in this similar electrode is using inert, the mass of this will increase because copper going there should increase the mass. So let's come to the other aspects of electrolysis. But this time, we're going to change the electrode to be active. So I'm going to use copper here, copper electrode. Copper electrode. So whenever I'm using something like copper or something like zinc or something like mercury, these metals, whenever I use them, electrodes are very, very active. Okay, so we have the electrolytes here to be copper 2 tetra oxosulfic 6. Okay, because the electrodes are very reactive, copper from here goes into the solution. And when copper goes into the solution, it's going to lose the electron to form copper 2. So, the anode reaction will be copper from the plates, S. We go into the solution to form copper 2. So, it's going to lose the electron doing that. So, there will be a clear case of oxidation. And then, that same copper that leaves the electron will also migrate uh, without allowing copper from the salt. Copper from the salt will still remain in the solution. But copper from the plate goes in, form ion, goes up, lose the electron. So copper going here from here, losing the electron from here. So copper from here going to the solution. You shouldn't expect the mass of the electrode to still remain the same. So they will be shrinking. They will be so, it will be so small, so shrink. So here, mass, I can say here, mass of allude electrode decrease, reduces, shrink any of this term can serve. So that's the copper that go here, goes up, go here. And once is the copper goes here, in a pure solution is going to gain electron from the anode, and then God reduce. Adding to this place, the mass of this week. So here, there will be increase in the mass of cathode. Remember, Copper from the soil does not, it's not, it's not, it will not, it will interfere. This electrode will interfere with the discharge of these ions from the salt. So, in this case, what is the nature of the electrolytes? I cannot say electrolytes, electrolytes, I cannot say blue, blue solution of CuSO4 persists, persists, it remains blue. It persists, it does not fade because you are using an electrode that is very, very active that will stop, that will interfere the discharge of copper from solution. So it persists as electrolyte remains the same, as electrolytes remains, remains what? Unchanged or the same. Okay, thank you for watching this uh, video. If you have any question, please go to the comment section, drop your question. You should uh, you'll be responded in a quick time. Please thank you for watching this uh, part one video on electrolysis. Uh, try and uh, also watch part two video that will be on calculation. Calculations, the Faraday's laws, it's two Faraday's laws of electrolysis, the first law the second law. Then we're still going to do applications of this electrolysis that should be in the part two of this uh, topic. Thank you for watching.